All right, you guys, this episode 17 of War Stories. I'm going to get straight into it. And I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to hit you guys with the hat trick, but it depends on how fast I can get through this. I think you guys are going to like this one. It's going to be another short one, but I think you'll like it. Anyway, when I think about this one right here, it all and I've thought about it in the past, it always reminds me of a situation that happened years later with Baby Joker. I talked about it in one of my previous war stories where basically I had a 38 uh, revolver with the hairline trigger that I was running around um, with it in uh, Mateo's sister's house keeping security on the house and I had my finger on the trigger and the fucking gun went off and baby Joker was standing right next to me he thought I shot him out of my peripheral I seen that fool jump so high that I thought he was gonna hit his head on the ceiling it was fucking hilarious man the boy got hops straight up but anyway this situation right here happened at the Star Hotel between 16th and 19th. I want to say it was on 18th, but I'm thinking it was actually on 17th in Mission. So the Star Hotel is one of the hottest hotels at that time, one of the hottest hotels in that area of the Mission District. Everybody that's running around, all these fucking... Uh, all these freaks that run around in the middle of the night were all at some point would probably go through the star hotel there was another hotel like that around the corner called the king same shit you can go up in there and you could rent a room the 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 middle eastern uh cats owned all them fucking hotels but you could go in there and rent any room in there for ten dollars for 15 20 30 minutes an hour whatever you wanted However long you wanted to rent it for. The motherfuckers knew what was going on. They didn't give a shit. As long as they got their money, they just didn't give a fuck. So, you know, at, at nighttime, you could walk through there and it was like, straight up, it was like a fucking uh, a, a cemetery up in that motherfucker. Zombies walking around. You had, uh, you know, you could walk down the hall and a lot of the doors to the rooms would be open. And you could look in and straight see motherfuckers. Sitting on milk crates, fixing, getting high, smoking dope, smoking fucking pipes and shit. Motherfucking, motherfuckers was doing their thing up in there all the time, man. Even in the bathrooms, in the showers, in the halls, people were going there to use it as a spot to fix their dope, man. So that's what kind of, that's what kind of hotel this was. Now, at that time, I told you guys I was kicking it with the homeboy uh, Angel from Daily City. And for the most part, that's who I used to run with at that time. But on this particular day that this incident happened, I was kicking it with another cat. And I'm going to refer to him as Filipino T. Out of respect for him, I'm not worried about the statute of limitations because enough time has elapsed since this shit happened. It's over 20 fucking years, man. So um, I'm not worried about it, man. But anyway, let me kind of set the, 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 the stage for you guys. So... That night, it was around, it was probably around 9 o'clock. We needed a spot. I had just, I just copped some dope, and we needed a spot to go cut it up and bag it up. At that time, man, everybody was selling one-in-ones. One-in-ones is, is like a $15 piece of fucking black tar heroin, and then a $10 piece, or $10 little uh, bag of, uh, of, of blow, of uh, powder cocaine. At that time, everybody was cutting their their, their coke with ether. It, ether based coke was fucking the bomb, man. Every it was addicting as a motherfucker. If you slam the shit, you would you would feel it, fucking hit you in the fucking chest. You feel that menthol feeling, and then you get that taste in your mouth, and you get that rush, and it be gone. But then you'd want that, you chase that rush, and you just be back to back to back to back. Just wanted, just wanted more, man. So anyway, me and the homie, we needed a spot to cut this shit up. I was selling uh, twenty dollar papers of black. So we go up in 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 the room. So there was a homeboy that used to live up in there. He had a room up in there. His name was Dicky. He was a homie, and he really was Filipino. He was a little short, stocky motherfucker, covered with tattoos. And the Star Hotel was his fucking domain. That was. Dickie ran that hotel. That was like, he knew everybody in, in, in that hotel. And he would literally walk around in there from room to room um, doing shit with cats, man. 
it, that 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 hotel was crazy as fuck. So you know it was befitting for the incident that w we would end up uh, um, doing that night. So I used to always go to Dickie's spot when I needed somewhere to to go do my shit, man. Um, it was right there off of you know right off the track where I'm slinging my shit. So I'd slide up in there and whatever I needed to do, cut something up. Uh, Whatever, man. He let me come up in the spot. And I come up in there. I'd usually fucking leave him something. And he was happy. That's all he used to do all day. Shoot dope and fucking just... You would go in the hotel a lot of times. And you see Dickie running around in the hallway with the needle stuck in his arm. Talking and, you know, running a little bit. And he'd go back to talking. He'd run a little bit more. And go back to talking and run a little bit more. Motherfucker was a fool, man. He literally leave the, the needle sticking out of his arm uh, as he used to run around. So, anyway, I told him I needed a spot. I seen him in the hallway. I told him, hey, bro, I need a spot to cut this shit, man. He's like, go ahead, bro. Uh, slide up in there. He's like, you know, there's there's uh, I got company right now, but don't trip. You know what I mean? They're doing their thing. So, anyway, we, we go into his room, and there's an Africano, and he's with one of the prostitutes. I recognize her. I used to see her out there on the track all the time. A lot of times she used to get her shit from me. Um, so they're kicking it. The Africano, he's he's kind of like, he's on his knees on the floor and he's got his elbows on the bed and the female is laying on the bed and he's just like, he's talking to her and they're just in there chopping it up. Now, one of the first things that I seen when I, when I seen the Africano was that he had on a shoulder holster. He had a shoulder holster on, but the motherfucker, there was no gun in it. It was empty. And I didn't I didn't see it at first, but the gun ended up being on top of the nightstand behind the lamp. It was kind of like stuck behind the lamp. He probably just took it off because it was uncomfortable. If you've ever worn a shoulder holster with a gun, it does get uncomfortable. I used to wear one. So anyway, you know, I see the pistol over there. I'm not tripping, you know, I'm... I'm not really there tripping off the Africano at first. At first, I wasn't tripping on him. But, you know, while me and T were cutting it up, I got a plastic bag. I'm cutting out little pieces to, to, to make our little bags and shit. And Africano's like, hey. He's like, hey, man. Uh, he goes, you guys got black? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, what's up? What you need, man? And he's like, uh, he's like, man, I don't know. He's like, give me a $30 paper, man. He's like, I'll, I'll hook you up with some good-ass blow. He's like, I got some good fucking blow, man. He's like, just give me a $30 piece and I'll fucking, I'll bless you, right? So I was like, yeah, here, man. So I cut off a nice little fat, chunky uh, $30 piece and I slide it to him. When I give it to him, he reaches over on the nightstand and grabs, there's a piece of paper at you know, when I when I seen the gun, I seen the paper, but I didn't know what it was. All I seen was a piece of writing paper folded up. So anyway, he had the coke inside the writing paper. So he grabs it and he puts it on the bed and he opens it up. And there was like two ounces of fucking blow in there. It's like a nice big fucking little little pile of that shit. So he takes a, a, a card and he just takes a corner and gives me a, a nice little issue, man. He's like, here, man. He's like, go ahead, man. That shit's good, man. He's like, you guys gonna like that. So, um, T gets it. He starts. I'm like, who? Oh shit, bag it up, make one and ones, man. And uh, uh, that's right on time, right there. He gave me hell of it too, man. But should have never done that. I had I had bad intentions, man. When I seen the blow, for one, uh, I was already my mind was already racing, like. Get this motherfucker, man. So, but anyway, he made it real easy. So, we're cutting our shit up. We're making bags now, making one and ones. Dicky comes back in the room. He was out in the hallway. He finally comes back in. He's, I give him a little piece of dope and uh, so, some of the blow that the dude gave me. I gave it. I'm like, here, bro, for the house. It's for you. I gave it to Dicky. So, Dicky's cooking his shit up and he's gonna do his thing. And uh, the Africano. Him and the bitch are cooking up uh, the dope that I gave him. So, anyway, the bride ends up fucking, uh, I guess the Africano couldn't hit himself or whatever, man. So, he's got the bride helping, uh, helping him. She's hitting him in the fucking neck. 
I've seen it done a lot. A lot of you probably, you know, that have never been around that shit. It's crazy. But people shoot dope in their fucking neck, right in their fucking juggler vein. So, you know, he's got his thumb in his mouth and he's blowing and she's she's hitting him in the neck. <laughs> right? So she hits him and they go back to doing their thing. But the Africano, after he shot the dope, he shot too much. He was fucking... He just went into a deep ass fucking knot. He didn't he didn't go out, but he was fucking he was in a deep knot, man. I could have stood up, reached over him, grabbed the fucking the coke off the off of the uh nightstand. I could have fucking took it all, put it back, sat down, continued to cut my dough, walked out, and he probably wouldn't even have known. That's how fucked up he was. He wasn't, mo he was just, he was in a deep nod and every now and then he'd wake up, he'd lift his head and then he'd go right back down. So anyway, after we, after, um, you know, we, we make a few bags, you know, my mind's thinking about getting this Africano now. I don't know him, never seen him before. I don't know who he is. I don't know his association with Dickie, but I tell Dickie, I'm like, hey, Dickie, let me holler at you, man. So I pull him out in the hallway, and I'm like, hey, homie, this Africano, is, is, is he your boy? And he's like, he's like, no, why, what's up? And I'm like, bro, I'm going to get him. You know what I mean? But I, I want to make sure that, you know what I mean, that that's not your people, man, before. I ain't trying to disrespect you or your, your spot, but I'm going to get him, bro. And he's like, hey, <laughs> do what you got to do. He's like, you know. I was probably going to end up getting him anyway for his shit, but, um, hey, handle your business, man. That's on you. So I went back in, and I told T, basically told him, hey, man, uh, let's get this fool. Homeboy's not tripping. He said we can get him, man. So he was like, fuck it. So we start putting all our shit away, and like I said, man, there's a gun sitting on the on the nightstand behind the fucking lamp. There's a lamp on the nightstand, and then the dope, his coke is sitting right there. So we get up. Uh, T gets up and just right off, right off the rip, he fucking just rushes the dude. He fucking gets behind him. He grabs it by the shoulders and he pulls him back on the floor. He's got him on the floor and he's pinning him down. I get on top of the Africano and I just start bombing on him. I start wailing on him. He was in a deep ass nod, but as soon as the homeboy grabbed him, it's like the motherfucker came up out that nod. I mean, because T literally just lifted his ass up and, and pulled him back, slammed him on the floor. And when he did that, I got on top of him. <laughs> you guys like it when I do that. Anyway, um, so I'm, I'm getting this fool, and the whole reason why... The whole reason why we're fucking socking this dude up is because I know he's got bunny on him, man. He's got all that coke. I know he's got a fucking wad of cash. So the bitch starts tripping. She don't say nothing, but she gets up and she starts to leave him. Say, no, hey, hey, sit your motherfucking ass back down. Sit down. So she's like, hey, I don't want nothing to do with this. I want to get up at her. I said, man, sit the fuck down. Sit your ass down. So she sits down and... You know, we're holding this cat, and now he's awake. He's like, hey, man, what, what the fuck you guys doing, man? He's like, why are you tripping? You know what I'm saying? He was like, fuck, you can take the blow, man. Let me go. You know what I'm saying? Let me up, man. And uh, T got him, in, and he got him in a fucking Nelson. Got him in a headlock. He ain't letting the dude go. And when he said that, I said, I told him, I said, give me the money, man. Give me your money. I know you got some fucking money. So I start to go in his pockets, and when I start to go in his pockets, he lifts his leg up. He like pulls his knee up to his fucking stomach so that I can't put my hand in his pocket. So I start punching his leg. Bop, bop, bop. I start hitting him in the same spot. Um, right on top of the leg. You know how much that shit hurts. I start hitting him so that he'll straighten out his fucking leg, but he's not straightening up his leg. Every I hit him a couple times. I try to reach in his pocket, but he keeps pulling his, his leg up. So I reach over, I grab the pistol off the fucking nightstand, and I smack him in the face with the pistol. I start fucking uh, pistol whooping and do. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever pistol whipped somebody with a gun, but when you hit somebody with a fucking little solid piece of steel like that, it splits them up, man. Uh, it's a it's a solid piece of steel, and it fucking 
I ain't never been pistol whipped, but I, I would I would probably bet that it fucking hurts, man. I smacked him like three times with it, and all three times that I hit him with it, I split him open. Straight up, man, no. So dude's, dude's leaking now. He's fucking wide awake. He came up out that nod. I split him over his eye pretty good because he was, he was bleeding like a motherfucker. Um, T still got him on the ground, and he's, he's still got him in a headlock. He's, he's pick, got this dude pinned down. So anyway, I, he still won't let me get in his fucking pocket, man. So I got the gun in my hand now. I'm hitting him with the butt of the gun on the leg in the same fucking spot where I was punching this motherfucker, trying to get him to straighten his leg out so that I can go in his pocket. If the motherfucker would have just straightened his leg out and would have been like, take it, I would have probably went in his pocket, took his money, and, and none of this would have happened. But his dumb ass kept pushing his leg up and he didn't want me to get in his pocket, which made me want to get in there even more. So... I'm hitting him with the butt of the gun, and my dumb ass got my finger on the trigger, man. So, I, I, when I hit him, the fucking gun goes off. That's why it reminds me of the situation that happened with BJ, because, for one, the gun went off on an accident, and for two, well, when I hit him, the motherfucker starts, you remember that movie, uh, Menace to Society, when Kane got shot, and he started, he started, uh, he started screaming like he was dying. That's what the Africano was doing, man. But at the same time, T was fucking squirming around underneath me. He was like, oh boy, you fuck, did you shoot me, bro? And my shot, <laughs> it was fucking hilarious, man. Anyway, that did the trick, man. The motherfucker straightened out his leg. I shot him in the leg. I could see where, where, uh, where I hit him at. Right in the fucking thigh, man. Straight in the same spot. Where I probably punched him like fucking 30 times already. This dude's leaking um, over his eye bad. He's got blood in his one of his eyes. He can't fucking open that eye. I shot him in the leg. Like I said, man, if, if dude would have just gave up his money. If he would have just let us take his money, man. We would have fucking got his money and we would have fucking... We would have been up out of there. Anyway, I reach... I go in his pocket and I take... The, the little bit of cash that he had, dude didn't even have that much money. It was like 300 bucks. And I grabbed the money, I grabbed the fucking dope, and I hit the door. I hit the door, and uh, I'm expecting the homeboy T to be behind me. But he, he don't, he don't, <laughs> he never came out. Like, I hit, I hit the door, I go down the stairs, and now I'm in front of the hotel. I got a gun in my hand, I got the fucking dope, and I got, uh... I still got the dude's money in my hand. I got all this shit in my hand. I'm waiting for homeboy to come out, but he never came back. He never came out. You know, he he, he wasn't tripping. I, I eventually ended up leaving. I mean, a fucking, the gun went off in the hotel. So I wanted to get the fuck up out of there. The, the Middle Eastern cats that run that hotel, they don't give a fuck. But, you know, somebody somebody gets shot in there, they're obviously going to call the cops. So anyway... At that time, I had a 1975 Chrysler. I ran to my car. On the way there, I remember seeing a, a female that was a good friend of my mom's. Uh, she was with her old man, and I, I told him, hey, you guys want to fucking, uh, uh, you guys come with me, man. Jump in. I'm going to treat you guys. I, I gave him a bunch of blow, rented a hotel down in, uh, uh, towards downtown San Francisco in a nice spot. I basically got the hotel, let them fucking stay there. Um, after we started doing blow, they acted like they want to start fucking. So I ended up splitting, man. But I seen T later on, and he wasn't he wasn't mad. He wasn't tripping. You know, even though he didn't get none of the money, he didn't get none of the coke. He was like, because I told him, I'm like, homeboy, how come you didn't fucking come out? I was waiting for you, bro. I waited for you in the hallway. And then I was standing out in front of the hotel, and you never came out, bro, so I bounced. He was like, nah, it's all good, man. Don't even trip. He was like, that fucking Africano, uh, he started trying to get crazy, man, so I held his motherfucking ass down. And uh, eventually, I ended up getting up, and I split. So the, the ambulance ended up coming and getting the food. You know, I'd end up finding out later that... You know, the dude didn't know me by name. I had never seen him before, the Africano. But, you know, he gave him my description. 
I talked to Dicky later on, and he's like, yeah, that motherfucker, uh, when they had him on the gurney, man, uh, they were taking him to the fucking ambulance. He's, he, he described you, but you don't know. He didn't see none of my tattoos, nothing like that. He didn't see nothing that he, he could have gave him that would have uh, identified me. All he knew was that I was a bald-headed Mexican, <laughs> and the clothes I was wearing, he described the clothes. So, you know, it was... It was uh, it was an interesting night, to say the least, man. Uh, that's the second time that, well, that was the first time, but, you know, twice I had almost shot, well, I shot one person on an accident. I didn't really mean to shoot the Africano. The gun fucking straight up, it went off. Um, you know, but that was the second time something like that happened where, I, where the gun went off by accident and... Uh, you know, the second time you guys already know where Baby Joker almost got hit. Anyway, man, this is that's a short one. I got some other ones that that uh that I'm gonna tell you guys about, but I'm gonna try to hit an inner demons right now. I wanted to give you guys some some. I'm gonna start talking about some other shit, some other gangbang shit that that um that happened years later, and then some of the shit that happened when uh it was red on red. But I just want to get that quick one out to you guys so that I can get into an inner demons. It's your boy Box, man. That's episode 18. We're going to fucking do the hat trick tonight, and I'm out.